Let's take a look at how to use end items in Windchill. All right, so here I am on my home page, and I have a model of a phone, and I want to make it an end item, except I can't remember what the name or the number of the object is. I'm not even sure it has a name filled in, so I'm going to show you how you could get to it. So I know which folder it's in, so I'm going to go to the product and the folders. And so here I am in the folder that contains the phone. And I'm like, hey, where, which one of these models is the top level? There's a lot of different objects in here. Well, to do that, I'm going to start off on one of the WT parts that I know is in there somewhere. And so here I am. This is the details page that has all the different metadata for the particular object. Let's see. This is and assembly and if I go to the where use tab here you can see okay so you can expand the number over here let me hit the plus sign to expand this and oh, okay so it is part of this one over here and we can jump to it by clicking on the hyperlink for the version and I'll go to the structure tab and I can see here's the full structure over here. I can expand. If you go to the display, you can expand all levels and you can see the entire product structure of this particular phone. But again, what I want to do is I want to make it an end item. I just want to show you a method of how you could use the where use tab to try to figure out what the top level of an assembly is. And so if I go to the actions menu, here we have a command to edit common attributes. And here it brings open a window with a bunch of different things in here. Let me expand it. And so some of the different things that you have in here, you can specify whether it's a configurable module if you're using the configure to order functionality in Windchill and Creo Parametric. Here's a gathering part if you want sort of like to get rid of this level in an assembly and have everything report up to the next higher level in a bill of materials. But the one that I'm interested in here is the end item and for the end item over here we're going to change that from no to a yes oh yeah another thing to mention while we are in here here's the default trace code in another video I will show you how you can do some configuration management inside of windshield but right now this is untraced and actually in reality we would want to trace these by serial number once we sell them to people. So this is good. The important thing is I've changed this option here for end item to yes. Now I will click the OK button. And if I go back over to the details tab, we can see here that it is specified as an end item. Another thing is the symbol for it changes. Let me see if I can turn on my magnifier. So in my magnifier over here, you can see that it now shows a gray gear with a little blue diamond on the side of it. Let me hit F12 again. And that way, we have an end item. And one thing about end items is that you can have end items inside of end items. Let me show you an example of that. Let me go back to this particular folder over here. Let's say that I want to create a new product structure to represent the packaging that this phone comes in as well as other things like the warranty card or the actual internal packaging and also the charger so i'm going to click on the new wt part icon over here and we get a dialog box first off what type is it going to be this particular windchill instance that i'm using has a number of different parts already set up in here normally your list is going to be much shorter but i'm going to change this to a part and here we have the option right at the top here to create this as an end item i'm going to say yes and so for the name of this object or the number of it i'm going to call it gs dash what the heck is the name of this? G2 dash, ah, I cannot type today. G2 dash S51 dash, I'm gonna call it 1000, say the 1000 number is what I'm using to identify packaging. And this is the, I'll call this the package, comma, flip, phone. And assembly mode, separable, yeah, it's separable. Source, make, yeah, we're gonna make it ourselves. 
the view is design, default trace code serial number, that's good. Default unit is each, gathering part, no. Phantom manufacturing part, no. Stop effectivity propagation, yes, whatever that is. And here's the folder it's going to be created in. Service kit, no. Default serviceable, yes, whatever. Uh, here you can create the CAD document for this, but I'm not going to create any CAD files for this. I'm just creating a product structure here in Windchill. And so let me click the finish button over here. And now we have our new part created. Let me go to this particular object over here. Now I'll go to the structure tab. Let me figure out, oops, I hate these toasters. Let me close that. Here we have the recently accessed list. I'm just looking to see what the name of the object that I want to insert here. And so again, we have the little blue diamond indicating that this is a an end item. Let me choose insert existing. This automatically checks out the object. And for the name of the object, I think it was called G2-S51-full. Let me put an asterisk on the end of it. Hit the search button over here. And there it found the object because I typed it in exactly. Let me click the OK button over here. And now the actual phone itself is in the product structure. And let's add in a few other things in here. So for in the full package, I'm going to insert a new WT part. And for the type over here, I'm just going to change this to a part. This is not going to be an end item. And I'll just call this g 2 s 51 dash and I'll call this the 0900 number maybe that's what I'm using for actually the packaging itself let me call it package and for the other different objects in here assembly mode this is going to be inseparable maybe I want to designate that default trace code untraced let's see default unit each everything else in here should be fine let's just click the finish button and so the object was successfully created. Here you can see it in the structure. And I'm going to create one other additional object inside of here. Let's insert new. And I'm going to choose part as the type of what I'm trying to create. And this one I'm going to create as an end item for the charger. And let's say that the number for this one is going to be G2-S51-0800. Just making my numbers up. I'll call it the charger and the reason that I'm making this as an end item is that I could be selling the charger itself as a separate replacement unit in case someone loses their charger and maybe for this one instead of serial number hey we're mass producing these we really don't care because they're kind of disposable let's choose lot as the trace code for these over here everything else is good let's click the finish button and so now here I have and a top level end item with two end items within it and another one in here. Hey, let's create one more just for completeness. Let me use insert new and this will be a part. And for this one, I will just call it G2-S51-WC. And this is going to be for the warranty card that comes in there. And this is good. I'll just leave everything else in there and hit the finish button. So here I have a product structure that is defined for the flip phone. It is checked out. Let's go to the actions drop down menu and choose check in. And here we have the form. We can add any different comments that we want, but this is all good. I'll just click the OK button. And in this way, I have created end items, I have designated existing WT parts as an end item, and then even inserted into the product structure new end items. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindshield.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.